Now, I know some people thought that I was going to bring pizza today, which seems very odd. Isn't it too early to eat pizza? Um, but we were, we were going to do a pizza problem. And this is the classic thing that we run into. What, what's the best deal? The buffet? Okay, the, unfortunately, this pizza <laughs> joint does not have a buffet. And, you know, I, they just raised their prices, too. They said, you know, $22 isn't enough. We're going to make that $28. So what's the best deal? How would you figure that out? Now, are you going to say, oh, it just depends on how many slices there are? Because you know that doesn't make any sense, because you could be a smart aleck, kind of like my father-in-law is, and say, if, you're, if you were making your own pizza, maybe something from the, from the freezer, how many slices do you want to cut it into? He'll say, you know, do you want six or eight slices? He'll say, I'll do six. I don't think I could eat eight. <laughs> so the number of slices is really inconsequential, right? What's important is what is the area of the pizza, right? If we assume that the thickness of the crust is the same, toppings are spread uniformly over all the sizes of the pizzas, then it's really about the area. Okay? Now, a ten, what does it mean to be a 10 inch pizza? What, what is that 10 inches measuring? It measures the diameter, right? So for a 10 inch pizza, Let's, let's do this. So 10 inch pizza has a diameter, of course, of 10 inches, which means that it has a radius of what? If the diameter is 10, what's the radius? It's five, right? Now, why do I want to find the radius? If I find the radius, what other thing about the pizza can I find? I can find the area, right? Because when you're trying to compare pizzas and the size of the pizza versus the cost, it's all about the area of the pizza. So if this is the case right here, then the area for this pizza would be pi r squared, which would be pi times 5 inches squared. And when you put that into your calculator, what do you come up with? What is this approximately equal to? We'll just round to the nearest hundredths here. So you have 3.14 times what's 5 squared? It's 25, right? So I come up with about 78.5 square inches of pizza. Are you with me on that? Well, let's see what square footage or what square area we have for the other pizzas. If I look at a 12 inch pizza, What is the radius for that guy? Six. The radius here is six inches, which means that its area, which is pi r squared, will be pi times six inches squared. And what does that equal? So that's 3.14 times 36. And I come up with 113.04. Did anybody else get that? Mm -hmm. So this is 113.04 square inches. Well, let's check out that 16 inch. Only can get it at Sam's Club and Costco pizza. For a 16 inch pizza, what is the radius?
that's 8 inches. So let's find the square, all right, let's find the area, excuse me, the area of this pizza. So again, the area is pi r squared. So pi times 8 inches squared, what did you guys come up with? What? How much? Oh, two, I think you said 296. I went, whoa. Okay, so let's, so 3.14 times 64, because that's 8 squared, 200.96, all right. 200.96 square inches. So how do we know which one's the better deal? Here's a little bit of foreshadowing for you. Um, we've already talked about a little bit of consumer math whenever you go to the grocery store and estimating how much your grocery bill is going to be at the end. The other thing to keep in mind, and this is what a lot of retailers have done, is that they have started putting unit costs there for you. Now some things, the unit cost is blatant because that's what it has to be. If you're buying things like produce, if you're buying meat, it tells you the cost per pound, right? Because I could probably ask you guys, how much do bananas cost? Do you guys buy the bananas by each banana? No, it's usually so much per pound, right? And when I bought bananas yesterday, yesterday they were 48 cents a pound. So what I want to find out here is I want to talk about what's called the unit cost. Okay, and again, this is going into what you're going to see in the next chapter after you take your test. The unit cost would do something like this. It takes the cost divided by some uh, some units, whether it's your weight or, or length or, or something. It's always the cost. So you basically you make a fraction here. Okay? You make a fraction. I was talking about the cost of a banana, right? Uh, the bananas are 48 cents per one pound. So that means for every one pound of bananas it costs 48 cents, right? Let's look at these pizzas, okay? So if I come back up here to the top, my 10 inch pizza was $14, but you're getting 78.5 square inches out of that, right? So what is the cost per square inch? Basically, what's the cost per bite of that pizza? Well, thank goodness I've got a calculator here. So 14 divided by 78.5 is how much? I've got this decimal, so that's 0.178. Here's what we're going to do. This is dollars per square inches, right? So 0.178 dollars really means how much in terms of cents. Maybe it's an easier way to think about it. So this guy is really 17.8 cents per square inch. And when you're doing unit cost, do you want the numbers to be big or small in terms of getting a good deal? What tells you you're getting a good deal? A higher unit cost or a lower unit cost? How do you go shopping? What are you looking for? A lower one, right? Like if you're going to go buy steaks. Well, you could buy steaks for $20 a pound or maybe $8 a pound, depending on the cut and the quality, right? And depending on the kind of budget you're on, you may go for the cheaper one, right? If you know you've got two grocery store circulars in front of you, one has, you know, strawberries are $2 a pound. The other one has it for a dollar a pound. Where are you going to go? A dollar a pound provided it's, you know, reasonably close. What about this 12-inch pizza? 12-inch pizza was $17 for how many square inches? 113.04. So if I do the math for this, 17 divided by 113.04. Oh, this is even cheaper. It's about how many cents per square inch? That's about 15 cents. Move around to the nearest tenth. 
per square inch. So right now, I might as well get, you know, this, the 12 inch pizza, I get more for the money, right? Unless you're one of those people that don't eat the crust. I think that's probably why they started putting cheese in the crust, so they could get people to eat the crust. And so this last one, see, we upped the price. And so you, now you're probably going, there's no way I'm going to buy this pizza, right? Now that he upped the price. So divide this by 200.96 square inches. So what do you guys come up with? Is it a good deal or not a good deal? Ha! Huh, by Grabthar's hammer. <laughs> what a savings. So this is 13.9 cents per square inch. Man, imagine what it would have been had I not increased the price. If you hadn't made that silly buffet comment. So when I compare these pizzas, it's not, and here's the thing, this is where you get, have the psychology and you have the economics all coming together. Economically, which pizza would you buy? Which one is most cost effective? The 16 inch pizza, because it's cheaper per square inch, right? Why might you not actually buy that one? Because you don't need that much. If you're a single person, you could probably take down a 10 inch pizza and it's no big deal, right? And no one's gonna think twice about it, but if you, you walk out of Sam's with a huge pizza and it's just you, and people know you're not going to a party, and you're not feeling, it, it's, it's not going to go well. Although some, some people may, you want me to raise the roof? No. <laughs> so we come back here and we see, then you keep going some more? All right, so, so you might not buy the huge one because you're not going to be able to eat it all or it's too much for you. But if you stop and do the math sometimes, you may realize that it might be better and cheaper in the long run to get a larger quantity. This is how, or this is the mentality that a lot of these warehouse clubs try to get you to buy into. So a lot of times if you buy something that's in a larger quantity, the cost per unit is cheaper. That is, if you can use it in the allotted amount of time, because sometimes things go bad. So you've got to think about all this. And you also have to think about, this is a great deal on toilet paper. Where are you going to put all that toilet paper if you have a one-bedroom apartment? Okay.